Sophos XG Firewall version 18 introduces various policy-based routing enhancements as part of SD-WAN functionality. In this video, we will look at those enhancements, discuss the scenarios, and demonstrate how administrators can cater to some customer requirements with the help of new SD-WAN policy routes. In version 17, while having multiple WAN links, we were able to take the gateway-based routing decisions for the traffic, such as load balancing or route via specific gateway link, from the firewall rules itself. However, from version 18 onwards, the gateway-based routing has been decoupled from the firewall rules and managed separately from the SD-WAN policy routing section. With version 18, the user-based as well as application-based routing has been introduced in the Traffic Matching Criteria section of the SD-WAN policy routing to offer more granularity and flexibility while making routing decisions. The prerequisites for this feature are the Sophos XG firewall must be running version 18 or above, and more than one gateway must be configured on XG Firewall to make use of policy-based routing effectively. This is the network diagram we are considering as an example to configure SD-WAN policy routing. As we can see, there are two active ISP links available on the branch office XG device, and the LAN users are in the 172.16.16.0 slash 24 subnet range. As per the requirements of the customer, the traffic of all the streaming media applications originated from any LAN machine must be routed via the ISP1 link only, and all the 80 and 443 traffic originated from the LAN users must be routed via ISP2 to the web proxy server located in the head office. So let's take a look at the configuration steps needed on XG version 18 to achieve this requirement. To route all the streaming media applications from the ISP1 link for the LAN users, please make sure that a firewall rule is already created to allow traffic from the LAN zone going to the WAN zone, which is the internet. Then we navigate to Configure, click on Routing, and then SD-WAN Policy Routing and click on the Add button. Enter an appropriate name, and under the Source Network section, we create a new IP host object for the LAN subnet range 172.16.16.0 with a subnet range of slash 24. Under the Application Object section, we create a new application object by giving an appropriate name. Then, select the category as Streaming Media so that all the streaming applications are automatically selected, and then click on the Save button. Optionally, if only certain authenticated users or groups are considered for this requirement, then we can also select them from the Users or Groups section as matching criteria. Then, select the ISP1 gateway as the primary gateway. In some cases, you may also select other available gateways or the WAN link load balancing option if traffic needs to fail over to other WAN links, in case the primary link fails. In this example, we are keeping it as none. Enable the Override Gateway Monitoring Decision option so that the streaming applications are routed via ISP1 link only, irrespective of the gateway status. Then save the policy route configuration by clicking on the Save button. Now, to route the 80 and 443 traffic via ISP2, we need to create another policy route by clicking on the Add button. Enter an appropriate name. Under the Source Network section, we select the 172.16.16.0 slash 24 IP host object, and then in the Services section, we select HTTP and HTTPS. Select the ISP2 gateway as the primary gateway, and finally click on the Save button. So, with these SD-WAN policy routes in place, all the streaming applications will always be routed to the ISP1 link via the first policy route, and the 80 and 443 traffic will be routed to the ISP2 link 
via the second policy route. Now here is another scenario wherein we can use the SD-WAN policy routes effectively to route the traffic between head office and branch office networks. An XG135 is deployed in the branch office and has LAN users in the 172.16.16.0-24 subnet range. The head office LAN network is 192.168.10.0-24 and is reachable via an IPsec policy-based VPN tunnel as well as an MPLS link. As per the customer's requirements, the VPN tunnel must be used as the primary default link for the traffic flow between the head office and branch office, and the MPLS link is to be used as a backup route. Once the VPN tunnel disconnects, the traffic must fail over to the MPLS link. Additionally, when the VPN tunnel gets re-established, traffic must fail back from the MPLS to the VPN tunnel. So let us see the configuration steps needed on the XG firewall to achieve this requirement. Before we start configuring the policy routes, make sure that IPsec Site-to-Site -site VPN is configured and connected between the branch office XG135 and the head office router device, and the appropriate LAN to VPN and VPN to LAN firewall rules are configured as well. The firewall rules also need to be configured for LAN to MPLS and MPLS to LAN traffic so that the XG device can allow the traffic to pass through when the traffic fails over from the VPN tunnel to the MPLS link. First, we need to create a gateway MPLS GW on MPLS port 7 of the XG device as the MPLS connectivity is available via that interface. Select the Health Check option as ping for the remote side IP 2.2.2.1, so that whenever the XG device is unable to reach this IP via port 7, the MPLS GW gateway should be considered down. Now we navigate to Configure, click on Routing, and then SD-WAN Policy Routing. Then click on Add. Enter an appropriate name. Under the Source Network section, we select the IP host object created for 172.16.16.0 network. For the Destination Network, we select the IP host object created for the 192.168.10.0 network. Select the MPLS GW as the primary gateway and click on the Save button. Now to set the VPN tunnel as the primary link for the traffic flow, we need to select option 4 from the SSH console access of the device and execute this command. Once we execute this command and reconnect the IPsec VPN tunnel, the traffic would be routed via the VPN tunnel by default. And once the tunnel is down, then it will fail over the traffic to the MPLS link and use the SD-WAN policy routes for routing decisions. Also, to make sure that the reply traffic for the head office initiated traffic flows over the SD-WAN policy routing, we need to make sure that the option for reply traffic is enabled via this command. So, in this way, you can achieve the VPN to MPLS failover as well as fail back with the help of SD-WAN policy routing. Alternatively, the same scenario can be achieved using a single SD-WAN policy route, even without changing the route precedence, by configuring the newly introduced route-based IPsec VPN. A gateway can be configured on this VPN tunnel virtual interface, and then it can be used to route the traffic between the IPsec VPN connection and the MPLS selectively, even when both the links are active. Some additional SD-WAN policy routing enhancements introduced in version 18 are Once the policy route is created, we can check the status of the gateway, whether it is green, red, or amber. Red means the active and backup gateways are down and the override gateway monitoring flag is disabled. Green means either the primary or backup gateway is up, and amber means the active and backup gateways are down and the override gateway monitoring flag is enabled. We can also disable or enable the route with the help of a toggle switch. 
The order of the SD-WAN policy routes can also be modified in a drag-and-drop manner. We can also clone the existing policy routes and use them as a kind of template to configure similar types of policy routes. The applications discovered by the Synchronized Application Control functionality can also be selected in the Application object and used for SD-WAN application-based policy routing. As we have decoupled the Route Through Gateway option from the firewall rules in XG version 18, we have changed the default route precedence to adhere to common deployment use cases. A fresh install of a version 18 device will have the default route precedence as static SD-WAN policy route VPN. The current route precedence and the policy route association with the reply traffic and system-generated traffic will be shown on the SD-WAN policy route screen itself. Now let us discuss the version 17 to version 18 migration behavior. To ensure a smooth migration from version 17 to version 18, the firewall rules have Route Through Gateway option selected as any specific gateway would be migrated and shown under the Migrated IPv4 SD-WAN Policy Route section, and they would be linked back to their associated firewall rule IDs. The policy-based routing for the reply packets also would not be applicable for version 17 to version 18 migration, and the option is kept disabled by default. So if required, the user can enable this option from the SSH console with the help of the following command. Some of the caveats associated with this feature are... On the deletion of the primary gateway, the associated policy routes will be deleted as well, and the traffic will be load balanced between the active WAN links. This is the default behavior for routing the traffic when no SD-WAN policy route exists. In most cases of application-based routing, the first connection from an application will be routed through the default WAN link load balance method, because the application cache is initially not aware of the destination IP and port information for the very first connection. Once it is learned, all the subsequent connections will adhere to their associated application-based routes until the TTL is expired. Application-based routes require an active web protection license. One of the following conditions must be met to make use of application-based routing. Application classification must be turned on. An application filter policy should be applied to the associated firewall rule. Or a the application must be part of the offload signatures and flowing through SNORT, the IPS engine. Ideally, the policy routes would be removed from the kernel routing table once the associated gateway goes down. However, if the override gateway monitoring decision flag is enabled, then the policy routes remain persistent in the routing table. For new version 18 installations, the policy-based routing for the reply packets would also be applicable, and the option is enabled by default. With the Deep Packet Inspection Scanning method, the application-based routing is supported for all the applications. However, with the Legacy Web Proxy, the application-based routing is supported for Pattern Apps and SyncSec Apps, and not supported for the Micro Apps. Finally, let us see some of the troubleshooting steps related to SD-WAN policy routing. Considering this scenario, wherein a user is trying to access the sophostest.com website from a computer having an IP address of 172.16.16.34, and we have created an SD-WAN policy route to route the traffic destined to sophostest.com through the ISP2 link. So now, we will look at the steps regarding how to identify the gateway and SD-WAN policy-based routing associated with this traffic. The user will access the sophostest.com website and then perform the NS lookup to identify the IP address of the website. Once the IP address is known, 
we navigate to the Diagnostics Connection List, then click on the Display Filter button. Enter the IP address of the website in the Destination IP text box and click on Apply to save the filter. It will show the gateway ID with a prefix 0x40, which means that the routing was done via SD-WAN policy routes, and hovering the cursor on the gateway ID shows the name of the gateway, which is ISP2 in our case. For detailed troubleshooting via CLI, we will open an SSH console session on the device and navigate to option 5, and then option 3 to get shell access. Then we will use the contract command to see the connection details of the traffic that is initiated by the LAN user for the sophostest.com website. As we can see, it shows the MARC ID starting with 0x40. If it shows the MARC ID starting with 0x80, it means that the traffic is routed via the traditional WAN link load balancing method. To identify the gateway associated with the MARC ID, we type in the command IP rule ls. As we can see, 0x4002 is gateway 2. Then we use the IP route command for gateway 2 to see the associated interface of this gateway, and as we can see, it shows that port 6 has the ISP2 link terminated on it along with its gateway IP. Now to identify which SD-WAN policy route is used for the traffic, we can see the PBRID underscore DIR0 value from the contract, which means that, for the associated request traffic, it has matched with the policy route ID4. So, we use the IP tables command to see the list of SD-WAN policy routes configured on the XG device. As we can see, the policy route having the ID value of 4 is on the third position in the list. In the web UI, we can confirm the policy route configured in the third position on the list, and accordingly conclude that the traffic is getting routed via the correct policy route configured for the required traffic. In this way, SD-WAN policy routes in version 18 can be used for standard as well as advanced customer requirements, along with great flexibility. We hope you liked this video, and thank you for watching.